Yo, yo. This is it. DJ, right? I DJ? Yeah. I DJ that one Puya show that one time. Yeah, uh, that, I yeah it was weird. I was I was like not 100 percent ready for it, but okay, yeah. it was fun. And then, but that was the crazy thing, Krez. Actually, as long as you're gonna get this off on this note, uh, you came out and you killed it. You were running back and forth in front of the crowd. That was the first time I was like, damn, Krez fucking can get the the crowd lit. Yeah, that was right. good. I just like doing that, man. Just just doing it. He came out bumping that uh, that Thunder Man. Appreciate yeah. that. That was cool. Anyway, this is no jumper. Dot com, coolest podcast in the world, and here we're with uh, Young Simi, 275, we yep, in this thing. Yep, yep we in this thing. <laughs> as well as uh, his close 275 affiliate, Young Yogi. Who got a lighter? What's good? Also known as the singer of uh, Metal Outfit uh, Volumes. And then we also have uh, the one and only Don Krez. Let's get it. A.K.A. Fat Nick's friend. <laughs> What's going on, guys? How y'all doing? Chilling. We just chilling. I'm yeah. just high. I think the people are very excited for this because they don't really know as much about Simi as they want to know, you know? Simi's a really, uh, let me tell you something, as a close <laughs> affiliate, you know, as a close friend, uh, he's a reclusive individual, homie. You got to really get, you know, he doesn't just open up to nobody. He right. Doesn't. I think it says a lot about uh, yeah. the podcast that we were able to get this uh, notorious street dude in here to, to talk to us. <laughs> um, I want to start off by talking about where you're from. What's, what's Opalaka like? What's it like? Yeah. Man. Ooh, Ooh what's Opalaka like? Crazy. What's Opalaka like? It's right, one of my look. favorite things to say. Opalaka. Opalaka, man. Sounds uh, amazing. The gutter, man. The block, man. Just. Man, I went there for four <laughs> right, look, days. Look, 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 four look, days. Look. Okay. My dog Yogi, right? He came to my hood. He went to the next block on my hood. And he chilled with one of my homies. So I'm going to let him tell it from now. Okay. Oh man! All right, let me let me tell you about Opalaka, man. I pull up in the Uber, in the Uber, and the first thing that happens, the first thing that happens, is this guy tries robbing the Uber with a, for the a gunpoint. Just a random dude. A random dude, and the only reason why I didn't we didn't get robbed, the Uber and me, thank God, was because my homie Mo stepped out and was like, "Hey, yo, 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 that's the homie," and the, and the guy looked back and was like, "Oh, that's your boy. Okay, you good?" And he puts away his gun. What? And he walks away. And is that, that just everyday shit out there? That is just yeah, yeah. that I mean, was look, my. Uh, if you, look, if, you, if yeah. you just look in like you don't belong around there, you know. Yeah, pretty much. If so, you're not from around there, don't go there. When you're in Florida, uh, is that where you still stay at? Yeah. Okay. Block boy, corn yeah. juices at the store. That was <laughs> one block away from his house, actually. Where okay. that happened. Right, and See, uh, that's the first five minutes of Opalaka. Simi's crib, me. man, is that in the corner? <laughs> yeah, it's in the corner. <laughs> a box, a box crib. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> nah, but, ain't that not? But you came from nothing, man. You got your own crib now. Nigga. Real talk. <laughs> hey, but so in your neighborhood, are you like a, the local hero celebrity because your shit is popping on? I am. I am. They know. Yeah. Because yeah, a lot of times they say you're not popping in your neighborhood until you're popping everywhere else. I, I mean, I get respect when I walk to the store, man. Niggas be like, yo, I seen you on World Star. Right. You know, man, keep doing you, niggas. You know, show love. <sighs> I'm just mad low key. Like, I don't talk to nobody. So, like, you know, niggas just be like, you know. Yeah. But have, have they always been showing love? Or is it the fact that, like, now you're on World Star? Like, when you were originally coming out, did they not know because the shit was a little too underground, a little too internet? Um, Maybe. But as far as people from my hood, you know. For them to see me on World Star is kind of big. Yeah, in the hood, World Star means a lot. Right. right, right. <laughs> what is that? Uh, yeah. World Star. World Star. <laughs> yeah, that's how everybody. Love when I was out there, when I when I went to Opalaka, they were showing him a lot of love, man. He was just, you know, everywhere, everything was real chill, real neighborhood. Right. It's real yeah, chill. Like, like in Miami, the the thing about Miami is that they they know about you, they show love and shit, but they, but they they really just want to see you turn up. Yeah, they just like, then they you know they gonna turn out with you. Turn up as in like do drugs or turn up as in like the show. Oh, <laughs> looking Every, around like everything. I don't know. <laughs> so where's the name uh, Young Simi come from? Um, I mean, I really just. You know, it it just come from me. Like I just needed something that fit me. You know, when I look in the mirror, like you know. Okay. Like, at the time when I made the name, I was like, I used to go by Dre. You know. Dre. Huh. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> There's too many motherfuckers named Dre. Dre. <laughs> Dre. Is that your real name, Andre? Nah. No. Are we allowed to know your real name? Is this public record? Not right now. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, for those who do know, come on, Carlos. You gotta save something for the album. <laughs> come on, <laughs> yeah, save Carlos. Carlos. Come on, Benjamin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I used to be Dre. Then I was like, nah, I gotta change it. And I, one day I was just, you know, just fucking around. I was like, Young Simi. Like I said it in a bar. Uh huh. Like, oh shit. 
got my rap name. It just worked for you. <laughs> yeah, and that's, it just worked. Okay, so so were you doing the whole music thing before you met Perp, or how did you come in this game? This is what we're trying uh, to figure out. I mean, I've been making music since since um I'm trying to say I was writing music in middle school, and then I finally got to record in like tenth grade. Uh huh. You know. And I don't know, I had a couple freestyles on YouTube, you know, and them shits used to take like two months to get 200 views, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got old shit. Like, when I had an afro, oh, you know, an I've afro been, on YouTube. I've been I rapping. Need to find that. Yeah. You can't find it. It's it's off YouTube? It's on, it's on YouTube, but it's private. You know what, uh, what I'm saying? You got okay. mad shit. So I've been rapping, like, been rapping. You know? right. I'm not like one of these new niggas that just fucking make a hit song by mistake. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, you, I've actually been rapping. It's so easy to me, I get bored sometimes. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, whatever. Like, I've been rapping. You know what I'm saying? But you think that's how it works? Is like, once you really get, once you become a good rapper, then it's not. Like, I listen to that some of my old songs. Huh, what'd you say? Is it not as challenging? Like, once you feel like you've actually reached I the point where you know how to do it? I try to challenge myself. I actually right. try to challenge myself. And I, that's like, you know, whatever. I try to challenge myself by doing, like, shit. Like, not writing a song. Actually just going off the motion. And, like, make actually making a song off the motion. Like, I think that's challenging. Like, So is that how the creative process is for you? Do you just go in or do you sit there and write something it first? It depends. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mood varies every day, all day. It can change all day. So if I just... <laughs> If I go in the stool and the energy's up and the beat is there, we can make a song right there. You know, it all depends. Right. Like, I don't, I don't, full metal, two million views. I recorded that in like 15 minutes off of the, off of my head. Okay. And I didn't, I, I, I wasn't trying to make it a banger. I was just, I felt the beat, the energy was right, and we did it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Me and some me used to, I used to engineer for him. We used to uh, do like five tracks a day. Jeez. And was that like... Basement music, too. He recorded the whole basement music, too. You know, we was in his studio, a little small, a little whatever it is. Like I was no sleeping, no I was AC, sleeping. whatever. You just, recorded that. That's my favorite semi tape. He recorded yeah. that. We was in the studio. I used to wake his ass up. Yeah, at 10 early. in the morning. You know. 10 in the morning, wake my ass up. Yo, yo, we got to master it, man. We, we got to finish this. Finish this. From 10, we'll, we'll work. Right. So when you would do five songs in a day, though, would you say that like they were usable, all of them? Or? Nah, nah, no, 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 I don't. He still has a bunch. That has I don't expect these. for every song to be usable. Right. I really don't. I'd rather lead a studio with five songs and three of the most banging. Like that's just me. Like, I don't what do you do? Fun. You sit back over time and listen to them, and then you start to <laughs> develop an opinion of your own shit after yeah, a little I, while. I actually do. I actually do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm weird, but whatever. No, but I think that's that's the way to do it because do it. just make as much shit as you can, right? Right. I, I feel like just make as much shit, dog. Something gonna come. Yeah. Something's Yo, gonna come. A bunch of bangers came out. Right. From that bass. They say that all the Yogi tracks. Every song we recorded on Basement Music Two, we didn't put on the album. Right. Like. So whatever. Yeah. True. 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 So what are, we, what are you working on right now? Do you have a, another tape coming out soon, or what? I mean, I just dropped um, BM Three in October. Uh huh. Then I dropped the you know an EP just because it was my birthday weekend. You know I was mad excited. I just wanted to drop some music. Right. So I dropped like six songs. You know an EP. Is it hard for you to hold on to your shit because you want to get it out there to the people? I just feel like get it out. Like it's you know what I'm saying to me like it's like episodes to this shit. It's like you know keep it going. Like <coughs> people fucking drop one song and sit on that one song forever. Right. Like. That's cool, you know. You you could do that. You can do what you want to do. That's the whole thing about it. You can drop a million songs. You can do what you want to do. So I just do what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, How did you two start hanging out? Because he's a singer of a metal band, and I'm assuming that you probably don't listen to that much heavy metal. Uh, I'll tell you how this happened. I probably started listening to heavy metal when hold I was on, on. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll say how it began, and then you tell it how. Uh, how did it begin? Jeez. Remember the first time I, oh, when I came. the first I time I met look like, the first time I met him, I was like yo, uh, I met some DJ called OK, and OK was a big fan of him. Okay, he just passed that back. So I'm like yo, the, I just met him and I called him the next day. I'm like yo, we're flying to LA to work with something like to work with these big people, and then he's like yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Okay, we went to LA and then he needed a studio to record at, and our homie Clip knew who he was. Yeah, he's two seven five two. So basically, what happened was that one day, Volume was uh, Get a little closer in uh, the mic. One day, when Volume was on tour in Florida, here you go, Simi. 
we threw a party and I tweeted out. This is back when we weren't like as popping as we were. We were able to do that. And I right. threw a tweet out and we threw a party in Winter Park in Orlando. And uh, I was just playing Greater Clan. I was playing Simeon. You know, this is like fucking three years ago. So if you really were listening to that, you really had your ear to the ground. Right. And this kid comes up to me at the party. He's like, hey, you really listen to this shit, man? Like, I know these guys. And it was Clip. And then we started just fucking with each other. And then, long story short, like six months later, I get a phone call from Clip saying, hey, my boy, Simi's out in L.A. with, uh, with, with Don Krez, and they need a studio. And then, boom, I was like, I got the studio. Let's do this. So I go pick them up. And who comes out of the fucking little fucking apartment was DJ OK, who's fucking massive now. Right. Don Krez and Simi, and that's how we met. And that was like two and a half years ago. And uh, we've been friends ever since. We just kept it, you know. He was. This is before Buffet Boys. Right. Don Kres was in Buffet Boys. This is before I was, obviously part of Two Seven Five. Like we were just all doing. Our own, Simi was just recording raps, and I had the studio available, and it just so happened the universe brought us together, and, and that was that, man. Yeah. Was it hard to get into the the young Simi like inner circle? You seem. You said it was kind of. Yeah, you, you know, know what? You don't let it, a lot it, of people it in. Definitely did take like it, like a year, a year and change for for him to be like, you know what? For him to be like, yeah, let's fucking let's do this. Like, come come over here in this corner and and start Talk doing to something. come. You know, I'll put you on or whatever. You know what I mean? Fucking Simi's been boot treating camp. me well, man. Boot you know, camp. Boot, <laughs> camp. boot camp, boot camp, yeah, boot camp for it's real, man. Easy. Simi. Well, it's tough to trust a white boy, right? <laughs> nah, man. It's just dog. <laughs> Mexicano. Just, <laughs> right, like sorry. I said, dog. I've been recording since like middle school. Like, you know, I know what it is to like come from nothing. Like, dog. Yeah. To, like, no one knew I rap. I wasn't the guy to be rapping around high school. I was literally quiet, just like, chilling. You know. So was was Perp the first person to recognize your talent? Um, hmm. Yeah, no, I'm gonna say Curry. Curry. Okay. Curry. So you knew him way back in the day too. Yeah, me and Curry, we got old songs. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Even the shit that's private on YouTube. Okay. Um, yeah, Curry. I say Curry. So all the the Raider Clan fans out there, man, they want to know like exactly how you got noticed with Perp and what it was like when you started working with them, and and the, oh, we could start there. People want to know what happened to Raider Clan too, and what's going I mean, on with it. But they want to know how you first got involved with us. How I first got involved, you know, me and Curry, we make music. Curry, or whatever, you know, I don't really too much know. You know, Curry was already with the Raider Clan mm-hmm. thing. You know, what I'm saying I was just whatever. I was just a nigga from the hood that spit. We make music, so you know, for me, like I wanted to rap what Curry was rapping. You know, right. then so I was rapping Raider Clan. Then I'm then then that's when he introduced me to Perp, the nigga who who made Raider Clan. You know right. what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, so you know, that's we did our thing, made music, and I mean that's just how the fans and everything came. Mm-hmm. You know from that. But is there was there ever like a falling out between you and SGP, or are you still cool with them? And I mean, we we still good. It was it was a little falling out or whatever, a little miscommunication. You know, uh-huh. um, I just feel like the fans, the, the fans. It, we got shit straight. The fans just misinterpret a right. lot of shit and and do and they do their own little thing with it. Uh-huh. So I'm the type of nigga I don't. Re- I just let it. If that's what you think, whatever. You know, so I'm not finna argue with you. Right. But yeah, man. You know, niggas cool at the end of the day. Like, do you still claim Raider Clan? I mean, I'm young semi. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just where I started from. So right. I well, try to. Well, it's crazy too because it's two seven five, which is BRK from. on the phone, right? I mean, you could say that, but you know, I was, I was the first nigga to. I got two seven five tatted on my neck, like before anybody. I got Raider Clan tatted on my stomach, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Before anybody, so it's like, I I rep that shit to the fullest. So you know, I can say I'm two seven five. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm cool with the whole camp of Raider Clan. There's no one, you know what I'm saying? Even this, from the CEO to the artist, I'm cool with them, you know what I'm saying? But we got to understand that I can rap what I want to rap. I can, You know what I'm saying? That's right. how it is. Like, it ain't no barriers or no craziness. You know, 275, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy to see how much talent came out of that whole movement because you got you guys, Such All the Water Boys, you got Puya and right. everything that they're doing. It's like... Do you think that there was just a, a the scene just created like a lot of fucking really successful underground rappers? I mean, it did. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people wanted to do they they own thing also. And, yeah. and by the know, way, I'm not ready to clam. You're not. I you came not after ready. all that. Uh, I am ready to clam, dog. Two seven five. I'm with Simi. I'm not ready to clam. Not. 
I don't, I don't know, bro. I, I just like to talk for me, man. Mm-hmm. I can't explain a lot of shit. But who do you hang out with when you're back home now? Who's your crew? Um, I mean, you know, we got my boy Lee, uh-huh. high as fuck. You know, he made beats for me. He's a producer, you know. Okay. Who I hang with, my dog, you know, Momo on the block. I'm a, I'm a regular person, you know what I'm saying? Uh huh. I just hang with my homies, like. Yeah. Studio. Right. Who are your, your early influences early on? Who made you want to rap? And who's who could you look at and be like, yo, I kind of learned a bit from their style? I say, like, um, maybe some Gucci, Lil Wayne, a little bit of everything. Um, maybe some Jay-Z. You know, I, like, shit I used to listen to. You still with Wayne these days? Oh uh, Yeah, he still go hard. Um, oh. You know, there's a lot of artists nowadays. You know what I'm saying? So right. I'm, I'm really, like, fans of, like, some of my friends, like, like who? Curry, Curry, Puya. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? Like, is it crazy? I was just watching the old uh, Puya and Fat Nick show video the other day, because I saw like an old interview where they were like, "This is the origin of Bum Bum Bum." Is when you were playing the character and just doing the Bum 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 voice for everything. <laughs> what What you mean the origin? Like where it started? Yeah, like where that came from. Because now you're putting it on hats. You said in a lot of songs and stuff. Was that where that came acting- from? Nah, that was just that. I've been saying that I was just, you know, that was just the time like, like the cameras was on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Like I done did a lot of shit and the cameras was that not on. Funny as fuck. Is so, it weird to look back on that now and you're like, damn, I was I, I kidnapped Puya with a machete. I don't even want to watch it. I don't. I mean, people would just watch it. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> That's funny as hell, man. It's so it's so good just running around it's in the crazy, neighborhood. Right to see something like that, like to see Puya, Fat Nick. Yeah. Curry, right. Puya was looking all right. Fat Nick was not looking so good back then. His swag was not fully completed at the time. <laughs> he didn't hey, glow man. up until he got dreads. Yeah, yeah. the dreads helped. Yeah. <laughs> That's when he started dreads, sipping man. lean. He looked a little bit more like a rapper once he got dreads. <laughs> until, until, uh, until he found <laughs> that high tech Nick. bottle. <laughs> yeah, you still yeah. drinking lean? Yeah. You're on it? Not crazy. Not crazy, but a little bit. You know, I like it. Lean. It's cool. He sips lean every now and then. What about you? Every Krez, you guys, you guys do too many drugs, right? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he just looks at me like out of breath. No comment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just live. But do you uh, is weed like your main vice? You just love weed so much. Yeah. You're in gotta love with smoke, it. Gotta smoke some OG. Right. <laughs> yeah, OG Kush, man. You stay on that all day. Right. <coughs> Growing up, I grew Preferably. up in the, I grew up in the Valley Woodland Hills. So right. man, I've been smoking on OG Kush since I was 13 years old. You think you're spoiled? Yeah. I'm spoiled. Yeah. Spoiled, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's spoiled. Like, what Wiz Khalifa from... was rapping about when he was like 21 years old, I was smoking that shit when I was 14. You know what I mean? <laughs> was, what's the weed like in, in Miami in this day and age, though? Is it still kind of rough compared to California? Me, see, me, I got a plug that get it from you know, out here or whatever. Right. But for these other niggas, it's, I think it's pretty bad. Why? Right. Because, dog. <laughs> They they dealers be lying to him, yo. Lying to him in what way? Like, telling him it's good, telling them it's this like, strain. Yo, it's this. Like it's how like I really been to Cali ten Kush. times. Right. So and that's, yeah. you gotta just yeah. keep it real with me. Yo, be this like, is bro, Super it's, Saiyan it's OG a, triple X fucking. Like, yo, this demon Kush. But they can pull that off over there because nobody really knows. Of shit, that's what right? I'm saying. But like to a nigga like me, I don't want to buy it after you tell me like some crazy name like. Come on, bro. I've been to Cali. It makes you not even want to have the conversation with people when they're like, what's your favorite strain? I smoke this. I smoke that. And you, just half the time you can be like, dude, shut a the fuck up. A lot of people up. don't smoke good good green like they think they do in Miami. Right. When I walk up into a store, I ask for OG Kush. I don't give a fuck what's it called. It could be called shit OG. Right. If it's, OG, if it's well-grown, organically grown California OG Kush, you know what I'm talking about? But is it rough for you, for you guys to hang out with a swag smoker like this fool over here, Krez? Got a big bag of fucking dirt, no, needle, like, no, pine needles and shit. Right. With the I wake up in the morning, I gotta always smoke my blunt. <laughs> that's good, that's good. That's all up, of us, I'm assuming. Up, that's my morning. <coughs> you, you smoke a blunt when you wake up first thing in the morning? Me too. Yeah, hell yeah. You too? You smoke some dirt. Yeah. I got a bong load. These guys, oh, bong these guy, Miami okay. East Coast, you know, they, they smoke way too many blunts. You know, I got no, nothing against blunts, but man, Cali kid like me, hit the bong. Yeah, you grew up like that? I grew up hitting the bong, man. Oh, we got to always gotta ha- have a bong, man. You know? yeah. The roar. Remember the roars back in the day? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was. are you on the papers as well, both of you guys? Or are you, uh, is it 100%? You know, I'm, you know, I'm not that picky, man. Like, I, you know, like, I'll, if it has OG cushion in it, it's good weed, I'll smoke it. Sometimes I, somebody tries to pass me a Swisher or a fucking joint, and I feel kind of intimidated because I'm so used to the backwoods that I'm like, I don't know what that's going to do to me. You know... 
I, I kind of agree with that, <laughs> but I also agree with with the. I also have to say with this backwood shit, man. Like, what is up with this backwood shit? Like, where, where did this fucking you took wave over the world, come yeah. from, dude? Like, what you mean, I, I the epidemic. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Because I don't hop on. I don't hop on no bandwagon, dude. Like, I don't have. Nah, you know, nah. Me and Simi been smoking with Lee backwards all day. I mean, if you smoked backwards a couple years. years ago, good for you. But like, man, if you just start smoke smoking backwards else. like this year or something, and you and you swear by them, man, get the fuck out of my face, man. Because like, Simi, you remember when you made the official switch to the woods? I do. I do. What happened? <laughs> it was a better transition. <laughs> One of the better transitions that I've made. Yeah. A little bit more complicated in the whole like rolling procedure. Like if, when you're used to swishers and then you switch to woods, it's all of a sudden it's like a science experiment every oh, time because anything well, could yeah, happen. Swishes, swishes though, but swishes I never did the swishes. Oh, you were never on nah. that. What were you on before woods? Um, I, I we we used to get sponsored. I used to get sponsored. Well, me and my dogs used to get sponsored by um, Grab Relief. We knew the homies that make it and shit. You know? oh, okay. That shit's bomb. That, that shit's really. That shit's what bomb. is that exactly? You know, I mean, it's the it's basically the same thing. All of us, you know, tobacco, but you know, what I'm saying they all made different. Right, Jamaican leaf actually. So it's like the Fronto leaf. It's like a right, literally yeah, right. comes okay. with. A, it's like a whole like you open the bag and it's not like a, yeah. like an individual blunt. And it's you like get like fifteen leaf. out of that thing, right? Yeah, Isn't it just, technically illegal to sell that though? I don't know. I, I don't really know. I, I always see oh, the old Jamaican Sim, dude smoking in the Brooklyn Sim, and shit. They, they put me on. These Miami the cats crib. put me on to that, that shit. Yeah. yeah. What do you say? Uh, they have it at a smoke shop next to my crib. He started out in Broward only. Right. Now he build up. Yo, it's good though. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what, you looking at Twitter? Yeah. What, all the questions pouring in? Nah. <laughs> I opened up my DMs yesterday. <laughs> what, you don't normally look at the DMs? I don't. I'm, they was closed. Like, you couldn't. Oh, okay. Like, give me questions. Nah. <laughs> no, it was just a big old pussy you just showed me right now on this timeline. <laughs> you know what, like, a hell of people wanted to know about? They wanted to know if you were beefing with DJ Smokey and what happened with all that. Uh, I mean, basically, dog, I fucked with Smokey, bro. Still. You know what I'm saying? So you, you like him now? Yeah, I fuck, look, I, I mean, I fuck with his, his talent, his music and shit. Like, some people as a person, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've I've met Smokey one time. Mm-hmm. Through all the music we made, I met him, like, one time, you know, for the tour we set up, you know what I'm saying? But I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. You guys went on tour together and it didn't work out, basically? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm I'm a cool dude. I be cooling, you know what I'm saying? Right. So just know. something happened. I was Something like, happened. Yeah. Basically. You know, what I'm saying? So niggas were chipping. You consider yourself on good terms with him now? Could you see yourself nah, working with nah, him? Nah, fuck that nigga. Oh, really? It's like <laughs> I thought you were uh, this whole time I thought you were saying you're all right with him. Nah. It just so that was it. If somebody fucks up one time with you, are you done with them usually? Dog. I mean, bro, basically had a problem with me, you on, know what on the tour. Like, yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know what he what his little problem was. Were but, you there, Chris? We was there. Nah, who was there? Uh, was, I was not was the there. Problem? I wasn't there. It was some stupid shit. Uh, he was just I, I, off. I think he was just off mad drugs and just couldn't just you know how the niggas be can't can't, can't just you know. Yeah. No, he didn't just, set up a successful tour. Whatever. It he was snowing. I heard something about like like some. It was winter, obviously in Canada, really dangerous shit, and he was you know. Swerving everywhere, some shit. I don't know. Just really? throw some girls' cars. Whatever, man. Something man. like that. I don't know. I wasn't there. Some so. bullshit. That's nothing man. to a boss. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm back on my feet, man. Always ten toes firm. People want to know what's up with Nell. Yeah, I mean, right now, man, Um, he just, he, he doing his dizzy. He doing his time right now. He got to serve. I don't know what he did, Uh huh. but he got to do his time. He'll be out. You have any idea how long this might be? Um, I don't. I think June. June. Yeah, Curry told me June. Can we get him in here? Yeah. He'll probably be down. Right? He might not know about it, but if you guys sure, tell him, it's a good idea. Let's make it happen. <laughs> you got an interview. So Can you, people also yeah. really are really into the idea of you putting seven grams in a blunt. Does this actually work? Because that's a yep. lot. It does work. They put him a 28 gram blunt a couple times. Okay, but then you start having to go into using multiple blunt wraps, right? No, I think they get there's like a, a there's actually <coughs> there's actually a one ounce blunt wrap out there. Really? It yeah. Is? Yeah, it's called a super blunt or some shit. Well, I guess that's when using the frontal leaf or whatever comes in handy, too, because oh, then you don't have to worry one. about using the small one. There you go. Yeah, that's true. I never thought about that. Yeah. Rolling the actual whole grab a leaf into yeah. one blunt. Right. What's you your favorite song of your own? Of mine? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a lot. Yeah. You got a, a, a long catalog of songs? A long catalog. <laughs> you know, 
I like mixtapes. Really? Okay, really? so what's the favorite tape? Um, in I terms of like a like, total project. Like Young Smokey, you uh-huh. know, BM, BM3, BM1. All of them, you know, Shut Up and Vibe. Right. Young Smokey's my favorite one. Young personally. Smokey, you know. That's what I try to do, just put out a lot of stuff so you can choose from like, you don't have to say like, what's your favorite song? You can be like, I like Young Smokey. You know, I like bass, I, I got people come up to me like, yo, I like basement music one. Right. Thank you for that mixtape. Uh-huh. People like, yo, thank you for Young Smokey. Right. Like, and so does that kind of inform your decision of what is the most popping of your shit? Is like what people come up to you and talk to you the most about? Nah, man. I listen to all my shit. Okay. Man. I listen to all my shit, though. In an average week, how often do you go in the studio and actually work on new shit? I mean... Or do you record at home? Do you have to go in the, in the studio? Um, I mean, I got, I got studios around the way. I don't really, like... I hit the studio. When I hit the studio, it's a wave, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh-huh. I come through it, like... I might drop, like, four, five, three songs, you know, okay. one session. He always does multiple. Next session, always. like... Three songs, you know, like it might not be every day, but when I come through, like, you know what I'm saying. Are you listening to the beats like when you're driving around in the car or whatever, and just putting together what's gonna happen in your yeah, head, like you plotting know, it to the beats? Yeah. You know. Uh huh. She's crazy because like when I'm just a- I I do music weird. Like I need to focus. You know, I, I focus on one thing at a time. Like so, I'm just weird. Like. I seen him tackle it different ways. You know what I mean? uh-huh. Like he'll he'll go in there sometimes with it written, or he'll go in there and he'll he'll freestyle it bar by bar. Like he'll do freestyle four bars, and then he'll be like, you know, punch me in right there, and then he'll freestyle another four bars. Right. But then he he'll always do like three or four tracks. That's very true. And then he whenever he's in L.A., he's at my studio. And uh-huh. when he gets lazy, I write his music. You write <laughs> you write verses for him. Fuck yeah. no. Really? Yeah, That's interesting. Metal. Full metal. Right? You wrote that shit? <laughs> Chris wrote full metal, man. Threats, his first threats, me. Lies. Could you ever imagine having somebody write anything for you? Um, that just yeah. don't work? Or, or you you could see it. Yeah. What, like a hook or an actual verse? Maybe a hook. Yeah. Because, you know, I was interviewing Speak the other day, and they told me that he got hired at one point to write hooks for Plies, and that really? Plies' his manager hated them all, and that it didn't last very long. Speaks? Yeah, Speaks wrote some of this shit. Whoa. But it never came out because he hated it. Well, I can't, I can't, I can't see Speaks' his lyrics going with Plies' nah, music I at can't all. See it. That was the issue was that they were like, no, this isn't like violent enough or whatever. Right. Which is completely understandable. Yeah. What's up with Plies? Where's Plies at? I don't have no idea. Where's Speaks at? Speaks is Mexico City. He moved out there. Oh, did he really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shouts out Speaks because that's where my whole family's from. Okay, because he gets hella love from the Mexico crowd. I think because he is a Mexican. That's cool. Mm. That's cool. Yeah, there's not that many, too many Mexicans really rapping. Right. Especially in this like scene with Simi, Puya, everybody else. You know, this whole such like water boys. Right. Like, not enough Mexicans. What is that? All the fans are Mexican, but I'm there's not enough Mexican, Mexican rappers. I feel like I'm one of the only ones, man. I mean, Aston Matthews is not really Mexican. Mexican. Huh? A bunch of our fans are Oh, Mexican. yeah. I feel like when you go to like. Yeah, we a, got Mexican fans. A show around here? It's or Mexican probably in Florida, baby. same shit. That's it's like lit, all man. Mexican kids, yeah. I'm honored. But there's not enough Mexican rappers. We need like a dude to come out and hold the fuck. So this is One your, your plan. I'm, You're I'm, gonna be the dude. Oh, Yogi. I am a first generation American. I'm the first one in my whole family tree to be born in America. Right. You know what I mean? So I consider myself pretty fucking Mexican. You know what I mean? Like, and I really don't see too many Mexican rappers out there. But if you're out there and you do any any rapping, and I don't see you. No, no, no offense to y'all, but I don't you know see you. Like, Baby Come bash. up, some of them, you know what I mean? Like, we need more yeah, Mexican Aston rappers, Matthews what I'm saying. Mexican? Aston yeah. Matthews? Is Aston it? Matthews might be Mexican. If he is, man, shout out to Aston Matthews, because he'd be going hard. I don't know. I want to see a Mexican rapper who, like, really embraces the culture and, like, wears a sombrero oh, and, like... Fucking Speaks, Speaks was wearing ponchos. That shit. giant poncho was a yeah. good look, yes. Hey, wear a sombrero. Yeah, I'll come out. I'll, do, I'll wear a sombrero. I'll wear, you know... At least a come out. I'm not saying for the entire song. Yeah, I'll come out, do a song like that, you know, fuck it. Shout out to Tyler Grosso who's here, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah Tyler Grosso. His podcast bitch. did numbers for someone who do not rap. <laughs> You're, like, 70K right now. That's crazy. <laughs> he said, you know how I rock. Oh, yeah, he set up these two just set up a show and like yeah. promoted a two weeks promotion. It did fucking pretty solid for just two weeks. Yeah, how was that? Twitter yeah, promotion yeah, yeah. only. Was I was ch- I, I was out in Topanga Canyon. Now that I live Canyon. here, Tyler I'm gonna start throwing like more events and parties okay. and shit. So. The Players Club. Yeah, and since the homies are are popping. Yeah. I'll just call them and be like, "Yo, do the show for us." <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah Quest just calls calls everybody. Hey, do this, do that, do that. And I'm fucking grateful for this dude because he really be put he really be putting me There's on. There's actually a tour I set up right now. Xavier Wolf, Young Seminary Baker. Yeah, I'm liking that. How how far is that tour going? It's, it's, it's doing good. Right now we have like five cities, but I'm not gonna try, I'm not trying to do a lot. Yeah, you and Xavier get along now? Yeah, we good. You guys we had little Twitter already. beefs over the years, right? Um, I don't, I don't know. Nothing too significant. Nothing too crazy. Who do you consider yourself to get along with the best out of the, the, the whole former Raider Clan mob? I mean, we all, like, got respect and we see each other. As, I, as far as get along, I mean, I'd be cooling with Amber. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, what's up with her? She cooling, doing a dizzy. She's, she's one of the best. Yeah. In terms of female rappers, everybody loves Amber. Yeah, she's, she needs more recognition. She, yeah, yeah, she does. She yeah, she does. does need more recognition. She goes very she hard. Goes Who's your favorite rapper as a musician out of the Sesh Hollow Water Boys? Um, Put them on Sesh the spot. Hollow Water Boys. How, how, who, Bones, like, Xavier, I, Chris Travis, and Eddie Baker. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, Itu. Itu go hard. Okay. Well, Xavier. Yeah, yeah. Xavier goes hard as fuck, you know. That one's good to hear you say that. Yeah, I like, I like Zay. Yeah. I like Zay goes hard. Chris, yeah, Chris goes, goes hard really as fuck. Chris goes hard, yeah. Chris goes hard. Baker goes, they all go hard, man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Everybody go hard. Well, it's good to see that it's all love because I know that a lot of the questions for, were from kids who are trying to stir up beef and wondering if people don't like each other, et cetera, et cetera. I'm in it for the music competition, man. So you like to avoid all that if possible? What you mean? Avoid like any kind of tension with other rappers or whatever? I mean, though. I'm just I just do what I do, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like that's it. Personally, but I don't give a fuck what kind of I don't give a you fuck. Do. You know if what I'm saying? Cool. If you don't like what I do, then that's yeah. you know, that's where the problem comes cuz I just be doing what I do. Yeah. Right. I got no problem. You, you could be playing I'm about to get A1 tatted on my face cuz that's how I feel cuz I'm <laughs> just my, <laughs> that you're the most A1? I, face A1. Where on your face are you going to go? Come through face clean. You know who I am. Let me in. <laughs> No questions asked. Where where would your first is this your first face tattoo? Yeah, man. But where are you thinking of going? Like under the eye, on the forehead, or the lip. nah? We going we gonna see. <laughs> on the nose. That, that don't count right as a here, face tattoo. Right nose, right nose, yeah. <laughs> we gonna see. We gonna see. There's a lot of good face tats out there, man. You see, Twenty One Savage with a big ass cross on his forehead. That makes him look scary as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty One Savage. Is he got shot a bunch crazy. of times and survived. Yeah. Yeah, he does have like an Excalibur sword on his forehead. Yeah. It looked like a cross at first, but then I was like, nah. That's oh, is it a sword? It's a sword. Oh, I thought it was a cross. Nah, okay. It's a sword. You got Fredo with the cross on his forehead, Fredo's too. Fredo's got a cross. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, yeah, shit. What the hell? What do we know? I was wondering uh, what you're like as a texter, because I like that line, texting on with bitches where you at, and it's all caps. I wanted what? to talk about texting in all caps. <laughs> I'm real. I get to the point. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you might. I don't text. I, I'm a horrible texter. Oh, are you? I don't know. That's my friends. What yeah, you were horrible. Fuck, you were horrible with a phone. Uh-huh. What, what, what y'all think about my my texting? <laughs> you sucked. <laughs> Why? Why do Nobody I suck too, man? That's... Why do I suck? Because you t- you take twenty years to respond. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like I literally, look at my like, text I'm like, yo, yo, I Simu. Think about got... when I'm texting, I never text. But, but that... like this, yo, Simu, we gotta go do the no jumper, fucking with Adam on some shit. Five days later. What, what, was, what was that again? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got to wait till I see him in person. I'll be like, all right, we got to do this real quick. You know, what do you think about this? And he's like, all right, yeah, let's do it. But so then does it kind of offend you when you actually hang out with him and you realize that he has his, his phone in his nah. hand quite often? No, nah, because I don't. because <laughs> nah, he does it to everybody. I was just so. asleep. But, oh, I does, right, I, he like, does it to the whole world, so right. no, man. It could be Obama hitting him up and Simi <laughs> right. will not give a fuck. So, right, basically. You know what I mean? And he won't respond to you for the most part. So if he does respond to you 24 hours later, then that's <laughs> like, that means like, that's okay, you're homies. Maybe you know he's just more of a phone guy, though. Yeah, no, you, you, you call him too. Like, it's just, fuck, he got his heart to get this motherfucker on the phone. You gotta be calling him a couple times. Yo, Simi, we gotta dip, you know. Like, we gotta go do this, you know what I'm saying? We gotta go do that. Yeah. No, but he be calling me too, though. I'm really good with my phone. I think that's why I'm being harsh on him. Like, you know, you call me, like, I hit you back. You know right. what I mean? Like, it's a very rapper thing to just not respond to texts for like days and weeks on end or just never. Yeah, for real. Like, yo. <laughs> Are you yeah, late yo, for everything too? That's like the other rapper thing. Is every rapper's late for everything? He's missed bad. all the flights that booked him. <laughs> <laughs> How many is that? <laughs> like, like six. He has six. Now I think about it. Why is he that? Missed, he missed two, two flights. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. as bad as Puya though. Puya missed. I kid you not. 
Puya missed a flight over Postmates delivering his sandwich late. Seriously? He, he called the airline. He's like, give me another flight My because po- Postmates like didn't deliver my sandwich on I'm time. I'm the worst when it comes. First of all, he likes to book my flights at like... Five in the morning. Five in the yeah. morning. So that means I got to wake up at three. Yeah. Because I've basically seen don't need Chris to go to books, sleep. You see how Chris books? No, nah, I shit. go to sleep because right. I need my sleep. Okay, you're a sleeper. A little bit. I need it. <laughs> Who don't? But you see how Chris books his shit? Chris is intoxicated oh, he's out the motherfucker. He's so fucked up booking <laughs> flights for all these. This food nigga, dog, he will give you the back seat in the middle. <laughs> On a on hey, a hey, but shows be fire. Yeah. yeah, I give him good accommodations. <laughs> he will give you a goddamn three destination before you get to where you need Yo. to go. No, I pulled up to the airport with these fools and like, okay, everybody's like, you know, we're getting the tickets and shit, and then like. One motherfucker will be on a whole other plane. Okay, you know I know. What I'm I saying, did, you know I what did what it on mean? purpose because he pissed me off. So I put him in a different. Oh, plane. it wasn't me. It wasn't me. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna say who it was. It was Lano. <laughs> Dude, we need the 2016 New Year's resolution plane. for Krez yeah. is stop booking flights off the Zans. Yeah. <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> book the flights a week ahead. <laughs> He books the flights 48 hours before, This man. man books the flight like five minutes before why, the show. Why are you in charge of booking the flights? Why can't they book their own flights? Because it's the, crisis, the one we doing it, though. It's just part of business. I do yeah. it all. He's the only one that's like, all right, I got to get on the laptop in front. Let's do it. Like, fuck it. Like, he's the only one that's smart enough to do it. He put everybody on. I, I give Krez mad props for doing that shit. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you, Krez. Got you. Do you love going on tour or is it just a pain in the ass? I'm, 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 a, I'm a tour guy. I need to see the fans and interact. I think that's part of like music too, like that comes with it. So I, you know, I like being on tour. Okay, where do you get the craziest reaction? I love tour. Where? Yeah. I mean, everywhere. Honestly, like, I mean, California. Everywhere. I don't know. California Texas, show Chinese. more. LA I, loves you, man. Yeah. LA, LA, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Go hard for me. Like. Yeah. Like Texas. You, I feel it, like Texas go hard for all music. Right, Austin, for real, like Austin or where else? Austin, Austin, Houston, Austin's the craziest one. Okay. Houston's really good. San Antonio. Uh huh. I like Austin. Crazy. Yeah, San Antonio pop. San Antonio, I like San Antonio. What about playing live in Miami? Like, do you end up playing like warehouse venues, I, like you play out here, or do you end up like getting booked for club nights and shit like that? I be, I honestly, I, I be in clubs like and the little venues. Like, I get, I get booked for like low key, like hostings. Like, you okay. might see me at a table. Uh-huh. Like not a lot, but like I've done it, you know, a good solid like what, like six times, like real low key, and I'd be like performing that shit too from the table. Which, no, not from the table. Okay. I just, you know, that's tight. I'll be tight though. I have it. seen that not in like perform. fancy I just be in there. clubs. Yeah, I just be in there. They'll have like a they'll have. I seen a uh, corrupt from the dog pound like sitting in, the, in dope, his little bro. VIP all night, and then it comes time for him to perform, and he yeah. literally just stands up on the seat and performs from there, and everybody's going crazy. I seen corrupt freestyle in LA. Really? Yeah, fucking. I was at uh, some Adidas fucking event. Right. And uh, Snoop came out and freestyled with Corrupt and that full Arab music. Uh-huh. Made a beat on the, on the spot. Really? Finished the beat within like three, five minutes. Right. And then Snoop and Corrupt started freestyling over that. So that was pretty cool. That's fucking dope. Fucking some little LA event. You're about to go on. You were just on tour for what, like two months? I was just on tour with my, yeah, with Volumes. Uh-huh. Um, we did a European tour with North Lane, which is a, a fucking very, very successful band from Australia. So you guys were support for them? Yeah, and okay. then we did a co headliner in the US. Uh huh. And so it was back to back Europe and then uh, US and fucking. It was amazing. I had a great time. Is it a totally different lifestyle going out there and screaming every night versus doing the rap thing? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What's it's, better? You know, I, I you know I love music as a whole. I love it all. But, you know, I definitely got to say, like, uh, I, I really, I think because the rap is new. Uh-huh. It's more than just a new feeling to me. Because you've been I doing the metal the thing forever, right? I've been doing the, the metal game for forever, and I'll never stop. You know, it's, uh-huh. in, it's, it's in my blood, and I always will do it. And volumes is... Popping right now. Yeah, like, you guys you know, have a huge fan base. We we're, we're popping right now. We got a really big tour coming up with the Buffet Boys. I'm not gonna announce what tour it is, right. but it's coming up. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be stoked. What was it like when you brought Fat Nick out at that one volume show recently? Um, you know, it was fucking. You, you could definitely see the people that were confused, uh-huh. and then you could see the people that were like, "Oh shit, Fat Nick and fucking Germ and Don Kreis are on stage." So it was cool to see. That we, we do share some fans, you know right. what I mean? And like the potential to to bridge the gap 
of these two genres are gonna, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna get closer and closer and closer because when you go to a buffet boys, when you go see Young Simi, this fucking mosh pits. It's not like a regular rap it's not show. Like a regular yeah. rap show. It's like a volume show. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like the like, audiences aren't that different from your perspective, like you know, demographically you know, or behavior wise. Surprisingly, there's a lot of people that that do like both, the, you know, both the projects that fuck with Buffet Boys and that fuck I with volumes. Bro. But there's definitely also a lot of people Buffet that don't Boy, know. Right. You know what I mean? Do shows that shit's crazy. Yeah, that like shit's the monsters. You've been there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Lit in New York, Webster Hall, we had like three mosh pits at the same time. Really? One in this side, in the middle. So, who you sold out Webster Hall in New York? Yeah. Well, that was with underachievers. Yeah, right? was crazy. Oh, okay, we well. just showed our fit. Yeah, with underachievers. Right. That well, helps. You could do it though. I'm, I'm yeah, sure we could. That's we were crazy. Just peeking out the balcony, and the and then you hear hear everybody just scream. It was crazy. We couldn't believe we had that much people. Right. So, so much fan base. It's funny because I go in the mosh pits for the I, I go in the mosh pits for these shows, and I fucking either someone will be like, "Oh, Yogi's in the mosh pit," or someone will be like, "Oh shit, Gus from Volumes is in the mosh pit." <laughs> so you know what I mean? And I, you know, it's kind of it's kind of cool to see. Is that weird for you having two names now? Uh yeah, it actually really is fucking weird because you know when I when I go out for volumes I am Gus for volumes you know mm-hmm. I really but when I'm with you know Simi I'm Yo- I'm Yogi most of the time I'm Yogi when I'm on thirty minutes or an hour on stage I'm Gus from volumes. Well, being a rapper is a little bit closer to your like real personality versus being like. Brrr. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know what I mean. And volumes has a we're, we have like we have the personality, but there's definitely like a lot more rules in that fucking. Industry in, in that world and in metal? that scene. You what know do you mean, what rules? I, mean? Like, I can't be going pouring lean in people's mouths right, like fucking okay, fat yeah, nick, yeah. shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, but is, like, is that still weird? Because I feel like a lot of hardcore bands are more open about talking about drugs and shit these days than they were back in the day. Well, hardcore. I don't tour. With okay, you guys are hardcore. Bands. You guys you know, are metal. Like, I kind of you know forget. I mean? like, yeah. well, we're like we're, we're we're the roots. The metal is root. Like the roots are metal, but. We're touring with like a mice and men, you uh-huh. know what I mean? Like we like we just did this tour with North Lane, so like these bands are more like uh, the new rock bands, you right. know what I'm saying? Like the new, we're not really metal as Metallica. What do you call Slayer. yourself? Like metalcore? If you had to yeah. describe it real quickly, dude, I'd call it, I'd call it fucking Chris, heavy. Chris is heavy trying to find music, a place for a shake here. Yeah, Chris trying to fuck, get rid of his fucking garbage ass weed. Look, we got a trash can right here. Make the girl throw it away. You know, that's a great question, man. I just call it heavy heavy music. Okay. Just heavy fucking, you know, groove metal. Right. See, that's why I'm I'm excited because, you know, we got you on, but we're going to have more, like, metal fucking bands or, like, hardcore bands in the future and stuff. And I think, because realistically, like, there doesn't need to be this big division between, like, rap no, it, and it, rock it and everything. It's, it's just silly at this point, right? I want, yeah, it's very silly. I want it to be. This is not, like, some fucking accident. Like, this is, this whole fucking... Shit that you see with volumes two seven five volumes Crez Buffet Boys whatever you know what I mean this on purpose like right. you know what I mean I'm a I love hip hop I love rap obviously you know I have rap as well mm-hmm. but it was a, it was not an accident like I wanted we all I think we all wanted to see it see mm-hmm. it come like this you know what I mean to the point where we could go on tour together to the point where people are gonna are like like to trash talk SGP you know what I mean like right. that worked but in a bigger and better way we're gonna you know want like volumes two seven five volumes. Fucking buffet boys, vol. You know, not even just volumes. That that whole entire scene. Right. Fucking with the uh, you know such hollow water boys. Everyone that you know what I mean. Just Simi, have you seen volumes live? Live, no. Really? He's actually never seen his live. Krez has a couple times. Just like, do you think you would be in the mosh pit if you saw them live? Me in the mosh pit? Yeah. No. You don't. You don't stage dive, do you? No. You're a little too low key for that, huh? I'm too. Yeah, a little low key. I think you might be too high. Yeah, you're too high. A little too high. Yeah. <laughs> to stage dive, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of people stage Germ, diving over high. Germ, Fat Nick, Krez, uh, they've all come seen volumes. Okay. They all fuck. Germ's a good stage diver. Yeah, Germ, Germ, Germ gets lit. <laughs> yeah. But he's a skater, too. So you it's know, like- it was so funny the first time Germ saw volumes live because he has never been to, he told me, he's like, I've never been to a, a rock show in my entire life. And right. we, I was in Atlanta. We weren't even in, in L.A. Like, I pull up to Atlanta. And I hit up Jerm. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm out here fucking with my, with my rock band. You want to slide out? He's like, yeah. And he pulls up, and he's he's never seen, a, like, people hardcore. like the, yeah. the mo- You know, because the mosh pit, they do the push pits and shit. Right. But in, the, in, like, the volumes and scene, like, people are like, swinging violence, and shit. Yeah. You know, what I'm, they're going yeah. nuts. And fucking, he was just like, what is going on, man? Like, fucking, he had no idea what he was walking into, right. basically. 
So Sorry, up. Jerm. Yeah. Bitch ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but he loved it. He, he was lit. He, he was all stoked on it. And the night he's like, damn, man. I didn't know it was like that. Right. You know what I mean? In his little fucking, in his little, little black voice. <laughs> yellow black, like alien voice. <laughs> you know what song I wanted to get the behind the scenes scoop on? Like a, a true underground hit is uh, Threats. Is there anything in particular that comes to mind? Like how did the song come together? We really like just linked up and just <coughs> planned to make a banger. Right. So that was the plan. Like, we need to make a real hit today. I think the way it got put together, n- niggas had in mind that they was trying to make a banger. Right. And it's, uh, that's still... It, it came out a banger. Like, yeah. I wrote the verse in, like, 10 minutes. It, he writes his shit it so was, quick. We just linked up. You know, I was lazy. Right. We linked up, did it, put it out, and it actually went crazy. Nine million YouTube views or something? Yeah. Yeah. That's a hit. That's like, because when I seen Krez uh, DJ that show the other day, not the other day, a couple months ago, that's what he came out with. He played Xavier Thunderman, then he played Threats to get the crowd hype, and he was running back and forth like a fucking crazy person. And I was like, damn, Krez, Krez understands this DJ thing. He's, he's got him going. Hit, man. Yeah, Threats, threats is, is crazy. Like, I pulled up one thing very recently, <laughs> this last yeah, European tour, I pull up. I land and the Australian one, the Australian man that opened up Hellions was fucking bumping threats on the bus. That's really? the first thing I walk into the into the bus in Australia, you know, in uh, in Europe, and these Australians are listening to fucking threats. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, and this was like two months ago. I was like, that's tight as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, there's no possible chance that you could listen to that song without knowing what Simi's name is because of the way you say it in that one bar. It'd be on for your neck. Simi. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way you could miss that, you know? The every whole time, song just every stops. Every I play it, I put the volume down. Everybody's like, yeah, Simi. Simi. <laughs> yeah, I just put the mic up Turn and up. let them see it. Yeah. Is that, what, is that your favorite song to perform live because it's the most popular? Um, it's because it's most popular? No. Nah. It's a pretty fun song to perform. Yeah. Um, I try to perform all the fun songs, Yeah, I think. But the bigger the reaction they get, the more fun they are, generally speaking, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Feed off the crowd and shit. I think it's crazy. I like to turn up with a lot of people. Like, I hate doing it myself. Like, I just want, I want everybody to run side to side on the stage while I'm performing. Like, okay. So it's it, mad at me if I'm too, like, fucked up and I don't move right. on stage when I'm with them. Like, this, let's not talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, one time I got too turned up. This, and I, one time he got too turned up and actually fell asleep on stage. <laughs> How the fuck you fall asleep on stage? Mid, you curl up in a ball? He was nah, nah. He was standing up with the with, with the mic. What the fuck? You know, Yogi. I'm talking about myself in the third he, person he, right now because sometimes he lit, man. Yogi, I go, I go, I take too much shit and I but zombify myself. I turn to the all, Walking Dead extra. It was all good, you know what I'm saying? Would, it was, it was all. Good. Would you agree or disagree with me that the the lean and the zans should be saved for after the show? I yes. fucking agree. I learned my I learned my lesson. Yeah. About, yeah. Like I don't oh, do I, I don't do zans. Oh, you don't do that at all. Nah, fuck no. Nah. Like, uh, I never did no drunk good. as fuck. Huh? I like DJing drunk as fuck. Well, right. you can't. You for definitely volumes, don't want to be doing the zans. Fuck zans. No. For volumes, I oh, knew, would up. never ever would take zans for a set. I'll smoke weed and get and get drunk. For the rap shit, I'm still learning, and uh, <laughs> I just get fucking <laughs> twisted. You know, <laughs> for the rap shit, I'm just been keeping it real. Sure. What I hate though, really? they close the bar after the show. Uh, I be looking for a drink every show after the show, and the bar closed. Right. Yeah, that's for I be a like, yo, bottle. I just perform. Like, give me a shot or something. Yeah. Oh, so you're a drinker? <laughs> he just started drinking. An occasional. Just started. A, a, yeah. An occasional. Okay. Okay. He's when off I the first lean. met him, he was not. He's off the lean with was, the sprite, and now he's on the know, fucking Hennessy with the sprite. Now, no, now I'll see him. Now I'll pull up and I'll see fucking Simi with a fucking Budweiser. I'll be like, ah, hell yeah. <laughs> see, I like that. I like nah, to see him with a Bud. I'm just a party guy. You know, if, it's Bud, if it's Budweiser, it's, I might not finish. I feel like it ain't cool. To, I feel like I it ain't cool to drink beer in the rap scene. It should be cool. I fucking love fucking beer, man. The fucking beer is cool. Everyone I love beer. <laughs> beer. My writer says 24 pack of Coromas. Every city I've <laughs> That's the writer? Yeah. That's Yo, awesome. Oh, my and Jerem God. too. Yo, uh, in tour with underachievers, we were getting drunk every day. Yeah? Oh. 45 days. Those guys drink a lot? Yeah. Hell yeah. A That's bunch cool. of Hennessy. 
Right. Bodega Bams too. Okay. Shouts out to the homies, man. Yo, my 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 writer, my my bass player. I'm. Let me tell you, he he's a fucking character. We should have we should have him on one day. Okay. And when we do the volumes dude, podcast, we'll get to meet all these weirdos that you hang out with. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my bass player, dude. He requests some crazy shit on our writer, like when you're up, like robes <laughs> and like you know lobster, <laughs> lobster, and shit like. And they'll that. give you that even as a hardcore no, band. No, they've never oh, okay. given us a lo- lobster, but you know we've gotten the fucking robes once or twice you know some shit like that but he'll request but dude it's hilarious bro because he i, I won't know i'll show up to the you know to i'll show up to the airport all right let's go on tour and then i'll be <laughs> and then i'll see what he <laughs> requested for the writer and i'll be like dog this is ridiculous you know what i mean like obviously he's have he's just fucking around he doesn't really expect to be for us to be given like everything but usually we just get a bottle well it's worth a shot if you put a hundred things on there and you yeah. get like five of them then yeah. you got a bunch of free shit you know usually usually what we get every day would be a uh, you know towels uh bottles uh little refreshments like you know f- like cokes and sprites and like sam little sandwiches and, right um I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be it. But I think that like metal promoters and stuff probably are not used to having to give bands that much, whereas like well, rap starts, promoters are probably used yeah. to dealing with all kinds of divas. Yeah, I, well, I, very true. But recently we've been doing shit like with like a mice and men. Yeah, so that's do, a whole new level. Going, going on tours of mice and men. Let me tell you, man, a mice and men is bigger than a lot of rappers. Oh yeah, yeah. Those motherfuckers like pull in a couple thousand anywhere they go. You know what I mean? Anywhere right. they go. What's What's on the Young Simi rider? What are you asking for at shows? I don't be asking for nothing, really. I need to start asking yeah. for shit. I'd be, <laughs> be a little too humble, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just come through and accept whatever sometimes. But don't worry. You're going to get something on that writer real soon. <laughs> At the yeah. observatory, uh, Eddie Baker got him to think he had like $200 worth of fucking Buffalo Wild Wings because he asked for it. They had yeah, no, plates no, no. of wings. No, Santa Ana Observatory. They, that's they the one, treat huh? You good. Yeah, they treat you real good. You know, you know, some places do. Yeah, that, that's another thing. Some other venues treat you better than other places. You know, right? right. Some venues got the budget. Europe treats you. Europe like royal. First of all, let's do it. Like, let me say something. Because yeah, you've I'm, been over in Europe. A lot of rappers. I'm uh, honestly haven't. bigger in Europe than I am over here. Really? I love yeah. Europe. I'm, I, I'm honestly bigger than. How Europe. many times you been out there? One time. Okay. But that one time. And I got a Facebook, you know what I'm saying? A lot of Europe fans hit me up on my Facebook. You know, that's all they use. Right. Like a lot of, well, I'm not, I'm not just going to say Europe. Like that, Australia, they everywhere. But like right. I'm big over there. UK, Europe, London. I feel like if you do good in the Paris. U.S., you're going to do fucking good in Europe. Because they really yeah. appreciate it out yeah, there. Yeah, like, yeah, they, yeah. they will fucking see a flyer, be like, oh, Young Simmy's yes. coming. I never heard of him. I'm going to go learn every right. fucking yeah, song yeah, he's yeah, ever put out. I, I, got a, I got a flyer yeah. from uh, when I went to Germany back at the crib. Yeah, yeah. They had, they had my shit posted up on walls and shit. You know what's funny is I was in Berlin, and I saw that on the fucking wall. You seen it? Yeah, I seen yeah, it just got on a random-ass wall. Right. Sure. Tripped me out. I got a yeah. poster. That's what I'm That's trippy. You know, what's, you know what was crazy, though? It felt like starting over again day one, touring Australia headlining. Really? I felt like I was like, like what That's am I doing huge. with my life? That's huge. I need to do that. Why? Wait, just because they treated you so good or what? No, no, no. It was just... Because they got to haul you between cities, hard. right? No, no, no. It was very oh. hard. Like the... Like it, it was like starting over again. Really? You know what? what I mean? Just because the audience didn't really know you guys? Yeah. Know your we haven't really reached out. You know what I mean? And the tour, the promoter, we just was... Bullshit, you know what I mean? It was our first time going there. We were learning. The second time we went was fucking lit. We right. went with North Lane, and they're fucking massive over there. Okay. So it was sold out every night, you know, the 1,200, 800, 600 kids. Now they're doing, like, 3,000 cap rooms and shit. This right. was about a year and a half ago. But uh, Australia was second time super lit. First time was, like, starting all over again. Europe, f- from the get-go, beautiful, amazing. They, the fans really appreciate. I feel like the music. They're more in one, they're more like they're more one with the music out there in Europe. Right. They're more pure because they they don't have it everywhere. Like if you live in LA, like you could actually go to a rap show like that's pretty fun, like three four times a week. Yeah. So yeah. you just don't a lot of the time, right. even if it's fucking dope, you know. Right. You know. Yeah. I, I, feel, I totally feel you. I feel like we're spoiled in LA and totally. there's, yeah. there's a million shows going on, and not just LA. I feel like the US in general mm-hmm. is more spoiled, and then in Europe. For some fucking reason, those Europeans, man, they just lose their shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? When I went to Russia, that was on some, 
Man, that was like they're like Russian. ripping they're like ripping your hat off and really? shit like yeah trying to buy your shirt off you for like, real like you know like, you went to Russia too I I think I did, did you go to Russia I think I did really I really did hey I so how did you Russia. adapt to Europe in general what do you think of the food what do you I think love about being the being in Europe man it's, it's just being in the whole I, it's honestly scared me because I was so far from the crib right. Like, he went alone, or who did he go with? I was I was with SGP. Oh, so he did make it out there because somebody told me that he didn't he didn't get on the flight. Nah, yeah, he made it out oh, there. Okay. We, we was out there, and a road manager and a bodyguard, and we was lit. Right. So what about the food? Can you deal with that? Yeah, I love the food. Okay. Man. Kebabs all day, baby. Ooh, kebabs, all kebabs all day. That was all real. Yeah. Day. Damn. That's fuck. Well, you're making that, me miss that. Food sucks out here, kind of in comparison. Like when it comes to that Middle Eastern, Mediterranean food and shit, yeah, man. Miami food. It. I like Miami food. Oh really? So what? Yeah, what, what in Miami? Yeah. Cuban food. Like. Oh okay. You know, Mexicano, food. Mexicano. Fuck the Cuban. Spanish food. food. Yeah. That's what's Wait, up. <laughs> it's very simple. How'd the girls treat you in Europe? Oh, man, oh baby. Let's not go there, man. <laughs> Why you got a girl at home that you got to hide your your stuff from? <laughs> Extreme no comment. Yo, Amsterdam. Yeah, Amsterdam. You fuck hookers out there? Fuck hookers. I've been in jail. <laughs> I got locked up for a month in Amsterdam. A month? A month. I, I what did you do? The hooker. You did? Yeah. No, that's dope. Yeah. I fucking I went to Amsterdam when I was 19 bad. and then got it. locked. Yeah, when I was 19, I went. This was not on tour. This is like I went, I was there by myself. Uh they got <laughs> these motherfuckers pinned me with two. a Reggie Blunt. Yeah, Chris smoking Reggie Blunt, by the way. Respect. Let me get that. These motherfuckers in the, in the I'm hall. I'm not hitting the hardcore shit on camera, but I'll hit the Reg. Yeah, hit the Reg. Hit the Reg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I'll hit the Reg. I don't want to get too high, you feel me? Chill Is it the, hard, the hardcore shit? These motherfuckers in Holland pinned me with two counts of fraud. They thought my passport was fake, and they thought that my California ID was fake on God. And they threw my ass in jail. They gave me three months, and I fought it, and I got out a month in. Wait a minute. They thought it was fake and it wasn't, and you had to be in jail for a month. Yep. So you do all these My illegal things all damaged. the time, and then you get in this much trouble for something where you weren't doing anything wrong? Bro, it was fucked up. Why were they playing with you? But I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I was 19 years old. I was, I was fucked up when I went in, like, into the airport. I got partied all night. You know, I woke up obviously still intoxicated, but, but I, was, you know, I was just a kid. I was, right. I'm still a kid. These fools locked my ass up. Right. They just threw my ass in jail. Let's keep talking about hookers in Amsterdam. Hookers in Amsterdam. (laughs) I fucked so many hookers in Amsterdam. I love it. So many. Yeah, like like at least 10. Really? See, people don't know how chill it is out there because it's literally you walk around in the red light district and it's all these little booths with all these chicks just basically (laughs) demanding that you fuck them. I'm just like, "Mm," you know, I always, every time I go, uh, man, I just go and I'm just like, I look, I I I take one trip. I go have a beer, I have a smoke, and then I'm, I'll make my mind up when I'm smoking my joint. Uh, I want to fuck that bitch, and then I'll go to that window and I'll or that like you know that door and I'll go and fuck. It's all bitch. government regulated. They get um, tested like once a week. You, you see, their papers are right there as soon as you walk in. It's legit. They got like a little wire on the wall. I heard so that if oh, the guy starts raping that. her, or trying to kill her, or whatever, they just grab the little <laughs> wire and the cops just come. I've never heard of that. But that's crazy. <laughs> that's smart, right that's, there. That's, I've never heard that. I'm pretty sure. It's <laughs> I want to experience that. Uh, I want to experience that. Sounds very safe. Yeah, I fucked hookers in uh, not just Amsterdam, but man, I fucked hookers in Germany. Uh-huh. Some good red light districts in Germany. Hamburg. Hamburg has lit red You're light. making me feel like I kind of missed out on some parts of life by not having sex with a prostitute yet. Yeah, bro, you know, sometimes you just got to try. You know, when I when I first went to Amsterdam, it, it wasn't like I got there and fucked a hooker right away. Like, it took <laughs> you had me to like, feel it out. <laughs> yeah, it took me like 72 hours, and I'm like, and then I got comfortable. I'm like, all right, this is tight. Fuck it, you know? I was yeah. 19. You know, and then every, every, now every, every time I go back, I fuck a hooker in Amsterdam. I can give a shit. I love it. But don't you think when you go to a different country that you kind of owe it to yourself to feel out the local culture a little bit? Yeah. Like, I was just in China, and oh, some, some guy was like, oh, like, you know, he said something about doing Chinese heroin. And I was oh, kind of like, I was kind of like, I'm in China. If this is what they do, like, I'll give it a the whirl. I've never heads. done heroin before, but I mean, yeah. if they're doing it in China, maybe I should give it a try. Like, while I'm there, opium den and shit. Yeah, why not? I don't me? even know exactly. Like, it was kind of hard it? to understand. What, no, I didn't get around to it. No, <laughs> I smoked hella trash weed in China though. I'm about to go to the Philippines. Mm. Yeah. Volumes, volumes going to the Philippines, and we're going to Japan <laughs> in March and May. I'm That's stoked crazy. as fuck. So did they take care of you with the weed when you were in uh, when you were in yeah overseas? I was taking care. Okay, like every venue. Well, on my rider was weed. Right. Yeah. 
Is that uh just because I needed it when I was out there? Yeah, could you have a hard time going a day or two without it? Oof. Yeah, <laughs> I, I could have had a pretty hard time. Finding yeah, finding your, finding out. weed in some places in Europe not easy. It's not easy. Some, I got some, some good weed though. in Paris. Right. I've gotten good weed pretty well. I've gotten weed pretty much everywhere I go in Japan and fucking China. It's Japan, a nightmare, dude. dude. I, I'm I'm about to three hundred dollar eighths and shit. And I never I'm, paid it, but I've seen other people pay it. What three hundred dollar eighths? Of weed? like two hundred dollar eighths of fucking weed. Yeah. Oh shit. And it ain't nothing special either. It's not like I would never pay for that. No, I've it's seen people bad. do it. I know wild. Japan. It's like if you get caught, it's like fifteen years or some shit. Yeah, I heard about that too. So and people would be telling me like my manager telling me like yo, you need to be very careful when you go out there. Yeah. Because I know. He knows, you know, how we do it. <laughs> we do it big. You know what I mean? We fucking roll up everywhere we go. I don't give a fuck. You bring me in your country, it's your fault. You didn't do your, your uh, homework. Yeah, you didn't I'm do your smoke weed in there. Mm-hmm. I was definitely smoking. I have a question for Simi. I, what, do you have things that you want to accomplish in your career, or are you comfortable with where you're at in terms of being an underground icon? No, I'm never comfortable. I'm always working and shit, you know what I'm saying? I really just want to just be huge, you know what I'm saying, uh-huh. and just be hurt, you know what I'm saying, just work my ass off until I just get where I want to get, right? wherever I get. You so know? so people shouldn't be surprised if they see you with a radio hit one day or what? Yeah, you yeah. shouldn't be surprised, you know what I'm saying, because I'm, I'm just like going to keep working until I get it. Has it always occurred to you that you had a really good voice for rapping? A lot of people tell me that, like girls, yeah. like your voice, but I don't really know. <laughs> To me, his voice is just, it's like the ideal rapping voice almost because it's all syrupy and just. Right. I don't a know. mastermind. A it's master like time. gutter, you know. <laughs> There's a certain smooth to us. I could see you rapping like a, a shampoo commercial or something. Is that sus? I need a sus. <laughs> Garnier, bro. That's money. Yeah, that's money right that's there. That's money right there. <laughs> For real. Suave shampoo. Boom, boom, Shut up boom. and vibe. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up and vibe. <laughs> hey, do you ever feel weird when you see uh, Perp trying to start fights with like damn near everybody on Twitter? Um, I mean, dog, I don't really know, bro. <laughs> I don't really pay attention, dog. I think, okay. I think everybody knows how, the, how, how everyone be. feels about that. That's how he gets down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm be- looking. He started beef with me, man. I never even met the guy. He tried to beef with you? He tweeted at me. Yeah, he t- took shots at me, at le- everybody in 275. He called me a faggot literally yesterday on my Twitter DM. I fucking <laughs> saw that. I saw that, man. For real? <laughs> yeah. It's all good, though. Yeah. I deserved it. He might have a point. Um, <laughs> yo, I'm looking at the Twitter questions right now. We're going to find out what the fans want to say. He called you a podcasting faggot, right? Yes. Which, I, I mean... I don't know. That is not true, Adam. <laughs> I'm not a liter- I'm not a gay dude, but you know, if he wants to call me a faggot, I'm not. I'm not too Bro, you're putting that. on the underground. If you're doing, you're doing the world a favor, man. That's what he should be. That's what he should be telling you. I'm trying, man. There's a lot of dope music out there that I have never seen podcasts with and those artists. And you know? people don't are not gonna fucking. There's not people like you that don't have the ear to the ground and know those artists. You know what I'm saying? Have the connections. Know who Tyler Grosso is. Know who Tyler Grosso is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Know who fucking. Young Simi Young is no who Don. Don motherfucking presidential <laughs> Krez is. You know what I'm saying? You don't know about Don Krez. You might have an issue. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to run for president. Yeah, I'm getting so many goddamn retweets. This it's hard dude to is, find these questions. This dude, Krez, is writing a book, for those who don't know. Is he? It's called it's Don called Krez Once Told You. Don Krez Once Told You. But what kind of stuff is going to be in this book? Like <laughs> tweets and shit. Yeah, it's like a Bible. It's like predictions. It's like a Bible. Yeah. So is it like the Bible or is it just like just any old Bible? Now I teach you how to become su- successful. Okay. Yeah. I'm willing to, how do you feel about Puya dissing you on that uh, the Suicide Boys one where he was like, oh, you learned something from Krez? That's, that's crazy. Krez don't have nothing to teach nobody. Oh, that. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's something like that. <laughs> huh? We always start beef with each other on Twitter. Yeah, you guys are always play fighting on there, huh? Oh, boys. Let me see. I'm still looking for a question. I'm only like an hour back in my fucking Twitter messages. This shit is way too crazy right now. Shout out to Ethan Courier and the whole Common Crew because they're all big uh, Young Simi fans. How do you feel about having so many BMXers and skate dudes feeling your music? That's dope. You notice that, though, in in your Twitter mentions and shit like that? Yeah, I do. There's been a lot of big videos on YouTube and shit where they happen to use your songs. I'm sleeping on a lot of that. I need to catch up. Okay. I'll show you something after. Yeah, I need to. Hell yeah. Can you believe I'm still looking for a question because there's so many fucking 
But that's dope people though to see people everybody. like snowboarding in my music, um, fucking BMX bikes. Hell yeah! It's crazy when I get like, when I get a a, a tweet or a, or a fucking message from someone in the army saying like I'm killing motherfuckers doing music. Damn. I'm like, damn. Yeah, army people. Yeah. Like I'm like, damn. That's that's real as fuck. Like you Legal. killing motherfuckers <laughs> in my music legally, you know and saying? you can tell me about it. And you can tell me about it. Like <laughs> holy shit. We don't have to worry about it. Shout out to anyone that's in the U.S. Army. Yeah, shout out to them. Oh, here's a good question. Uh, who who would you like to uh, collaborate with in the future, both on the realistic side and on the people that probably wouldn't happen that you just respect as musicians? Um, I want to do a song with. Chief Keef. Oh, okay. Um, anybody, you know what I'm saying? Um, anybody. I want to work with Banks. Banks. I I want to make good music with Banks. I think we're gonna make some. We'll make some dope shit. You think you have the potential? That could be big for Miami, right there. Yeah, yeah. I got the potential to go against whoever. You know what I'm saying? Like that isn't even a thing. Like, have you ever done music be with him right before? Really? Um, oh, besides yeah. the obvious examples. Yeah, my, yeah. On, on Shut Up and Vibe. Right. We got something. Okay. You know, I'm ready. I, you know, me and Curry, we stay going at it low key. If people don't notice that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, you should, uh, you should do something with Gunplay, like like Denzel did. Right. I right. fuck with Gunplay. Do you like Gunplay? He's pretty cool. He's Miami shit. Yeah, Miami shit. OG. Yeah. You ever met Rick Ross? Um, I actually was in Cali, and my hotel. I walked out from the hotel, and he was like. I don't know where I was at in LA, but he was performing like right around the corner and some, you know, some shit. Like it was free. Uh huh. Yeah, so that's the only time I really seen him in person. Oh, okay. Um, what about DJ Khaled? Did you ever have a conversation with him? You watch him on Snapchat? Yeah, I watch him on Snapchat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel way too Who funny to not watch on Snapchat. <laughs> the key. The keys. The keys, yeah, the keys. bro. Lion. They don't want to see you do a successful podcast. They don't want to see you wake up and make money. <laughs> You notice that? I don't want to see you wake up and be successful. Every day, ice water, egg whites, and fucking oh, yeah. chicken sausage. He's well, eating the water, same thing every day. My egg whites. <laughs> my water, my egg whites, Chef my D. broccoli. He's in jacuzzi. Yeah, in the jacuzzi. <laughs> that fool snapchatted himself lost at sea yes. in his fucking uh, jet ski. Yeah. I was I was like, damn, that's pretty that's pretty lit. Dude, his chef gets put on. Chef D gets a shout out like literally every single morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was big. She's probably like the most well-known chef in Miami for that. That's crazy. I don't know. Chef D? Chef D. That's what he calls her, I'm pretty sure. Damn, shout out to Chef D. Having a chef, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Like, yo, I'm, I want this. Let me go get it. Dude, that would Thank be you. nice. Yo, Fat Nick. Speaking about chef, Fat Nick is an excellent chef. Is he? Excellent yeah. fuck chef, man. That motherfucker. He's got the body cook. to be a chef. <laughs> he looks like he's been he chefing yeah, he, it up and does. then testing out his product. <laughs> he does. Yo, he he he's made some chicken parmesan and pasta like some of the best I've ever had, actually. Right. On some real shit. That's what's up. Fucking shout out to Fat Nick. Who's the up and coming dudes out of Miami that you, that you think people should check for, or just up and coming dudes in general? Mm. Clip, clip. We got a boy, clip two seven five. Okay. Um, Damn. I don't know. I don't know from, my, from Miami. I don't know. I could tell you someone not from Miami that I'm fucking. We still with. trying to come up, right? You still feel like yeah, you, you still feel like an underdog, right. even though you huh? you still feel like an underdog, even though you've had quite a bit yeah, of success. I, mean, I still, people, I feel like people still sleeping. You know what I'm saying? But that's cool. But I don't feel like I'm an underdog actually, because you know everywhere I go, people show love. Right. Like nobody don't like like. Like, I was in traffic, someone seen me through their window, took a picture of me, like, yo, that's, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> like, just the other day, me and my homie Lee, what it was, yesterday, we was at the gas station. Right. And it was a car sitting there with some dudes in it. We went in the gas station. You know, I'm like, yeah, there's some dudes, whatever. You know, they look thugged out or whatever. So they came in the gas station, like, yo, you, I, I know I'm tripping, but you see me? So, you know, like... Underdog. You want to hear the weirdest place that I ever heard your music, and this is something I totally forgot about until this moment, is one time I was with this girl and we were sitting in Denny's. This is maybe like six months ago, and there's like a Spanish dude over here like on the side, and he's with his girl, and he fucking 
just starts playing Simmy's music on his phone, loud as hell in the Denny's, like as loud as his phone goes. Yeah. And I was wondering, I'm like, does this guy recognize me? And he's trying to like feel me out, like see right. if I'll say something about it, or is this guy really this big an asshole that he just <laughs> plays music? I've never heard anybody play music in the Denny's before. Damn. What are you guys looking at? Betty White. Betty, Betty White or twenties in her in her twenties is oh really my. fine. Holy shit! Ooh. Who the hell is that? Oh, Betty White. In Betty her, White. Oh my. How do you feel about Fine. dudes blasting your music at the Denny's? Damn, you like yeah, old you ass white that? ladies, huh? Hell no. Nah. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You know, the other day I was walking down the street with Krez and someone showed love to Krez. Really? We were, we were walking down. Where were we walking? Probably never happened again. Universal. <laughs> we were at Universal City Walk, and someone was like. Someone right when, right before you have to walk up to the hill, some fool fucking he's bumping rap, he's bumping Simi. Really? And uh, he pulls on the window, he's like, "Hey, Chris, hey, Chris, Don Chris." I tripped out. I was like, <laughs> "Oh shit, <laughs> yeah, it was good." That's awesome. Hey, yo, some sus ass fan asked uh, about your porn habits. They're like, "What kind of porn does Young Simi watch?" Shit, um, I don't know. Betty what kind White. of porn you watch? Homie? Betty White. The ones in my phone. That I made with your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my Sleep god! Man. Why is he so fucking lyrical? Somebody asked. We we'll be going dummy. What kind of why is a weird way to phrase that question? Why is he lyrical? Why? Somebody said your snares are kind of quiet. In case you wanted to have a conversation with your audio engineer. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, that's you. That's very specific. That's cool. I thank you, thank you. Thanks for the tip. For the Lee, point. that's you. Engineers <laughs> out here mad as hell. Thank you for the pointer. We out here. Somebody said, what's good with him and Floyd Mayweather? What the fuck does that mean? Oh, oh shit. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I just recently did a private party for his son. Really? At yeah. his house or something? Uh, you know, at a, at a hall or something, at, a hotel, at some fancy hotel. So did you get to meet Floyd? I met his son okay. and his son's. Uh, I ain't meet Floyd. Uh-huh. You know, he was wherever he was. His mom. Probably. Yeah, I met his. I met the son's mom. Baby mama. His baby mama. His baby mama. So I was I was on tour and I was like. Fuck. I was lit. Basically, I did a private party for, for Floyd Mayweather's son. Yeah. And they DJ for it. And crash DJ. No, you DJ. That's what's up. I wish I was there. Unfortunately, I was on this, tour. That's why I don't feel like I'm an underdog. Like, yeah. I do shit like that. Like. You know what I'm saying? It's just like up to you to know that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what's weird too is that like you could do you know you have music videos with millions of views. This interview will probably do like a hundred thousand views. So are you an underground rapper if you've got millions of views on YouTube and you know you, people care enough about your interviews? I'll that, post this you know? shit on the volumes page too, by the way. A a a. I don't know. It's it's a weird uh, to be called an underground rapper in 2015. It's kind of a, a vague thing to say. It's just it's just the the word. It's a weird word to put it. Yeah. You know, I feel Simi. I feel Simi is a, a fucking respected rapper at this point. Yeah, I would call. I would call myself an underground rapper. So okay. I think Simi coming up. Simi's coming up hard at this point. Yeah, there is still an underground aspect like, to it. I would like my respect. But you, you know, feel like you still got some respect to be earned. You're getting yeah. called. You're getting called. But I would like my form. respect. I actually, I just you know, I I, I feel like I I work. Like why yeah. shouldn't you respect me? You know what I'm saying? He's getting called to perform for Floyd, Matter, Floyd Mayweather's son's like, party. I just, like, like, come on, right. that just speaks vol- That speaks right there. For real. Know? What about like remaking the same song, like taking the same song and just sort of doing another version of it on your next tape? Like, how did you get into the practice of doing that? What you say? Say it again. Like the way that you did lean with a sprite multiple times, like on multiple different tapes. Oh well, see that's that's something that like I'm glad you noticed that I, I do that. Like I try to just bring that back. Like yeah, on different tapes, the lean with a sprite, like the part two that I uh-huh. did. I I just wanted to continue it. You right. know what I'm saying? I'm dizzy as fuck. Got a drink in my cup. I just wanted to continue with Full Metal 1, Full Metal 2. Right. You know what I'm saying? It might be a deadbeat, too. We don't know yet. Ooh, okay, okay. That'd be interesting. It's concept, you know, bringing the concepts back. I it's kinda, like, like, like that shit, pe- too. Yeah, man. People don't... If you could do it once and you could do it twice, like, I really do it. You must really do it. Like, right. a lot of people, like, it's not by mistake. Uh-huh. Like, I made Full Metal 1, and then I made Full Metal 2, and they both got a million views. Like, right. 
I it's kind of like an old school hip hop tradition because you know, like Mob Deep shook ones, and then they did shook ones part two, and part two was actually the classic. Nobody remembers shook ones part one, the regular one, so much. I mean, it's like makes sense. If you find a hook that works or a concept that works for a song, you know, why not? I also feel like the fans also like seeing that too. Like, oh shit, he's right. bringing it. You know what I mean? Like, I got into it. I got into his music from Full Metal One. Always doing Full Metal Two. You know what I mean? Right. Like, right. They just think it, they have something familiar to grasp up onto. You know what I mean? I mean, that's how I feel when yeah. I see it. You know what I mean? Like, Lean with the Sprite 1 and 2, it kind of shows the progression, too, because, like, the, the sound quality is better, the beat is better, the fucking, it just sounds like a more advanced artist, sort of. This might be the mid-talking. Lean with the Sprite 2 is actually just, it comes in, like, a verse. It's, it's like a minute song. Right. And it's just a verse, and then it goes into the hook, and then it just goes off. That's just like, up. you know, a quick interlude. I call it a little interlude. Whatever you said. Makes sense. I think we're uh, winding this down, but can we talk about the fact that uh, Tyga got caught today for DMing a 14-year-old? Does this happen today? It's real out here. Well, he got Yo. caught today. Look at oh. Tyler is suggesting that he banged her, I think. Oh, he's saying that she's hot. Nah, she's pretty hot. You know yeah, oh, she, she looks good for a 14 year old. That's real, yeah. That's crazy, man. These, you know her? That's scary that there's, that there's good looking 14 year olds. That's fucking scary. It's We're hearing from our uh, sources in here that she. He's, they're saying she's bad. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. And that she gets around, which is not oh. too surprising. You 14 year olds out there. But yo, you ever have that experience where you get a girl following you on Twitter and you, you start trying to talk to her a little bit and then you kind of realize she's still in high school? She's underage. Yeah, yeah that happened. You got to just know that. Yeah. You got to ask. You got to be gotta extra ask. careful. And you got to ask. You got to ask. For real. That's a Because th- on tour, man, you can't. You got to be careful, man. You yeah. got to put your end of the career real quick. That's put, true. Put, put an end right to it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so definitely you got to ask if you even have a fucking. Yeah, especially if you're someone like Tiger, man. Shit, you Tiger, know what I mean? yeah. Like, come on, man. Like, shit. I'm nowhere, nowhere near his level as an artist, and I watch out for that kind of shit. Simi, would you do a song with Tiger right now? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Yogi? Nah. You get that that juice, you know. You might have the labels checking for you after that, you know. If I don't need no fucking labels <laughs> after 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 doing dealing with volumes and shit. Wait, wait, so you don't like having a label in the hardcore uh, scene? My new label is tight. My new label is tight. What was your old one? Media Scare. Right, Media Scare. That's what all your videos on YouTube are on. Fuck Media Scare. I'm going on record and say that. Really? And I'm going on record and I'm going to say that we uh, we signed a new deal and it's coming. Like we're going to release uh, that inf- that like. Is the it a news. major name that people would Hell recognize? Hell yeah, it's a, it's a sick ass Victory? label. Yeah, but we're going to release Victory. it. With, no, it's not Victory. Oh, okay. It's uh, it's Fearless Records. Oh, and okay. we're gonna we're gonna release that information with the new record and the new tour and a tour this summer. That's and, what's up. Uh, and a new vocalist because we just fucking parted ways with the other one. With that white boy that with I was that watching you on stage at Warp Tour uh, yes. the other day. Why? What happened with him? Uh, you know what? He's a fucking bitch. I'm just gonna go and say that. But really? Other than that, he just didn't. Apparently, he just didn't want to tour anymore. He uh-huh. didn't want to scream. He just didn't want to be part of like the. Uh, he didn't want to scream. Really? But. There are so many other reasons, but I'm just going to, that's where I'll, where it's I'll stop It's tough being in that. a band, right? Like, it's hard to keep all these people it's, on the same page, huh? It's hard being in a band, but if you get in, if you get in a band because you want to be famous and make money, then you fucking, you're an idiot. You know what I mean? Like, you got to get into it, in the music, because you want to, you want to, you know, you want to <laughs> do music. You know what I mean? Obviously, at one point, you got to care about the income, but, the, you know... Passion comes first, money comes second. Your experience in the in the hardcore or in the metal game is it like almost impossible to make money? No, nah, man, I got homies that right? make money. Okay, you know what I mean. Uh, I'm definitely not making great, you know, much, not that much money, but right. I feel like we're on the right way, right? And we're fucking with the right people. As a I, rapper, it's a lot easier because you don't have to pay for shit besides your fucking flight and your hotel and yeah. You know, no, it's as just a you. band member, you got, see, there's five people in volumes. We have a fucking front of house guy. We have techs. We have a tour bus. Uh, we have a tour manager. We have a, a fucking merch guy. Yeah. The list goes on. We so, have production. So, so it's fucking like, you know. You uh, got to make a lot just to break even. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But we, 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 do make a, we do make some money. All you right. know what I'm saying? But if we were to cut all that out, we would be making cool money. Oh. But we don't want to. We want to, you know, you got to invest back into your project you gotta I feel you know you. what I'm saying yeah get some smoke get some fucking blinders get some chicken shit. wings get some chicken wings after the show Simi 
what can we look forward to you from you and uh, your man's here uh, in 2016? Just more hot fire. <laughs> Just, just more dopeness, man. Lyrical madness. Put on your glasses. Uh huh. That's it. Hey, if somebody came up to you and said, "What's your favorite lyric that you ever spit?" It's the first one that comes. There's to Many mind. bars out there. That's the that's the thing about Young Simi. You can like choose a bar. Uh huh. You can go back. Give me like four bars though that really stand out in your head, or even just like two two hot words. Hot nine, Drew Brees on the center. That you know, that's one. You know, I hate you do with the hot. Nine. That's a single bar, but yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, what I say? You know, whatever. <laughs> Lean with a sprite, blunt real Pull tight. Up on your bitch in my spaceship. Right. Spaceship yeah. is crazy. I love that song. That's one of your best songs for sure. Hell yeah! You got to play that. Do you play that live every time you play out? Pull up on your yep. Yeah, you know, because I remember drunk as shit riding around in the fucking Uber playing that and did a Snapchat looking out the window, and I woke up to, like, literally 100 messages asking what it was. Young Smokey, very, very legendary mixtape. Yeah, Young Smokey. That's That's the thing about Young Simi, too. Ain't nobody be co-signing me. I be out here by myself, like, all all my fans, you know what I'm saying? I ain't getting no big co-sign yet from nobody, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's cool, but until that, Khaled reaches out and you start eating once, with Chef once I B. get a cosign, just say, oh, just if you ain't fuck with me before that, just know <laughs> that's the cutoff point. We gone from there, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But hey, right now though, everybody like we lit, bro. Like niggas got clout. Like everybody, we, we work, we we work. Like you don't just wake up. You don't just too. wake up. A lot of people knowing you for what you do. You know what I'm saying? Liking your shit. Like niggas work. That's what's up. So, uh, Krez... Just dropped the project, actually. Okay. So, what's it called? My boy just dropped the um, a beat tape. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, fucking for those who fuck with 275, check that shit out. It's on SoundCloud. See me, we, we, we blog that on, on yeah, SoundCloud. it's on my, song, okay. on my SoundCloud. I'm about to drop another tape. It's called Age of Inuyasha. Okay. I got a tape out right now called uh, Sit the Saiyan Saga. Simi's on it. Fat Nick's on it. Right. Fuck with that Bass Music 3. Okay. Fuck with that Young Smokey. You know, fuck with that OG ashes, OG smoke, same thing. You know, all those was released 2015. That's what's up. 2016. Fuck with that Don Krez. Fuck, hey, fuck with that. Don Krez is a real one, man. He be <laughs> behind the scenes. Yeah, his EP is about to be lit. Don Krez and Friends. Is what Underachievers, Bodega Bams. Young Simi. Young Simi, Fat Nick, Curry. Krez is got heat on the way. Krez, stay off the Zans. Your eyes are fucking rolling to the back of your head. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Tyler Grosso yeah. chilling here too. Buying his girl expensive purses and Tyler shit on the fucking the Twitter and shit. Yeah, shout out to Tyler Grosso. He'll, he'll real Tyler well. gave him to Zans today. <laughs> <laughs> Are you on Zans right now? That's what it is, dog. It's for, for extra slow right this now. This ain't a podcast. It's a Zan cast. I wish I was on too. That'd be hilarious, man. You got any more? I'm shit? zombie mo. We're Ooh, all just Zanned out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much to Simi for uh, doing this interview. Uh, shout out to No Jumper. Everybody follow SoundCloud, YouTube, oh, iTunes, yeah. all that shit. NoJumper.com on Twitter. Shout out to Tyler Grosso again because he's just flexing in his FTP over thank here. Thank you for having me here, man. Hey, thank you for making uh, the streets happy because they wanted to They wanted to find out more about Simi. You ain't done too many interviews over the years. This was wow. a challenge. I had to hit up Krez like 18 times to get this popping. Yeah, or excuse yeah, me, me hit up Yogi. Yogi yeah. had to hit me up like 30 times. Yeah. I told him, I'm like, yo, this is Yogi a fucking had, real Yogi one. couldn't get me, so he kept blowing my boy phone up. <laughs> yeah, straight. That's how it is. That's dog. what this podcast is about, is getting the dudes that are impossible to get anywhere, like Antoine Dixon, where he had to literally catch, almost catch a body in the process of doing this. He got arrested the first time he came to do it because he pulled the knife on some fool. Well, I'm glad I made it happen, man, because, you know, my boy sent me actually trust and... He actually listened to what I gotta say, so I was like, well, I don't fucking, yeah. I don't fucking tell him you get to do something for no reason. You know what I mean? I'm you like, yo, try this to is, guide the ship in the right direction. I'm like, yo, this this is legit. You know what yeah. I mean? Like this motherfucker gets some mad hits. It's I appreciate good. It's that. It's no man. stupid questions. You know what I mean? Everybody it's, tweet at me on some shit. I want to know what you want to know for the volumes podcast, and also what hardcore metal bands we should bring through because you know Yogi's got some connections. Maybe he could get fucking Metallica in I here or whatever. Get, Pretty much anyone like in the any anyone in the Warp Tour scene. Right. Get Guns N' yeah. Roses. Nah, that's not Warp Tour scene. Hint, like, hint. Warp Tour. You know, we out here. You want. 2016. We out here. Buffet boys. No it. jumper. Two seven five. Peace.
That's all good. Hey, some crazy shit is happening in that front, though. For real? That is often true. Did someone get shot?